Uh, I'll just say this. That word strong is so loaded for me. A lot of people think if I just could do it like this, that it would all be fine. And it's like... In our society, it is seen as such an accolade to be this strong black woman, this strong man, this just strong in general. Just be you. You do not have to be all these things. Stop. Yo, what's up guys? We are back with another, I feel like special edition of the For the Soul podcast. This is featuring the healing experience. So as y'all know, we have been putting on retreats as well as doing like these amazing wellness experiences. And so these episodes for the next couple of weeks are going to feature some of the people that we are highlighting for the healing experience. For those of y'all who don't know what the healing experience is, I mean, I'm gonna let Kenny kind of take it because I want to put you on the spot. Wow, so tell the wow. people what the healing experience wow. is. <laughs> okay. So I feel like the healing experience is unprecedented access to people that you typically won't have access to. They have resources and education and expertise and knowledge in a lot of the areas that we need when it comes to our overall mental health and our wellness. So that's pretty much what the experience is about. And experiences are great teaching moments for a lot of people, but we aren't exposed to those things. So yeah. we wanted to create that for exposure. Right. So yeah, so, I'm, ex I'm excited yeah. about our guest today. I'm super excited to have this amazing guest with us because I've had the pleasure of knowing her for quite some time. Um, but this is Sharice Harden. Sharice, you are a wellness professional, but I don't want to I don't want to tell them who you are. You go ahead and just let the folks know. Uh, yeah, I'm Sharice Harden. Um, I am a professional uh, mental health specialist. I am the creator of Harden Behavior Health Services, where we focus on solution-based therapy. And mm -hmm. what that basically means is that you're taking a look at your life and you want to do the do things differently, mm -hmm. but you need the tools in order to be able to process those things. Right. Um, it's the same as you saying is you can't take old keys to open new doors. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we help you get the right keys to yeah. open those mm -hmm. new doors that you're trying to create in your life. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing this for about 15 years in different capacities, ranging from anxiety, depression, uh, life motivation, yeah. um, just a whole area of things. And okay. I'm so excited to be here Hi. on this venture. And yes. I'm just very excited. Well, we're gonna crack it open. I already know you have a billion do, questions do, ready to fire I off. I so, questions, but I want to start with what made you get into this field? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's just start this. I've had a life that has spanned over so many different areas. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone through a lot growing up. I've had a lot of different traumas. I had a lot of different things that mm -hmm. I've had to overcome. And going into therapy, having those issues, there were things that. I couldn't relate to people who were talking to me. I felt like they were giving me textbook information. Mm -hmm. I felt like they didn't hold the spiritual aspects of mm -hmm. what it means to have gone through these things mm -hmm. and journey to the other side. Mm -hmm. And so after I have experienced trauma, I then went to go educate my trauma mm -hmm. so that I can heal from the trauma. Mm -hmm. And because I took those journeys and I'm still learning to this very point, mm -hmm. I wanted to use those experiences and my now experiences to help grasp people to, so that they can understand and they can connect with you. When you connect with somebody, it's easier to heal. Mm -hmm. So you were going, you had gone to therapy yourself I and did. felt like it was something's missing from this experience. See, what people think about therapy, you think you find this person, you're going to mm -hmm. sit down with mm -hmm. them, it clicks, they're going to mm -hmm. help me, everything's great. Yes. That's not true. That is not, every therapist is not your therapist. Yes. And so you have to go through a variety of different people until mm -hmm. you can find the mm -hmm. person that fits who you are. My mm -hmm. therapist, no matter how great she may be, may not be your therapist. Right. Yes. And so dealing with that at a very young age, I was just going through the motions. I'm sitting down, how yep. do you feel? What's yep. going on? Yep. It wasn't helping me because I couldn't connect with the person. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be that connection so, in therapy. Mm. That's so I don't That's think so that real. I don't think that a lot of people understand when it comes yeah. to people say go to therapy so much, but there isn't that interim piece of like how to find a therapist for you. Yeah. Like it's such an unfamiliar process for a lot of people. And I'm saying this from my own experience, having recently got a therapist is like you don't know, like you just kind of get in 
and you start talking about your feelings because you've yeah. never done that. And it's like, but you don't know like how I should be connecting with this person. Yeah. Like it's just, and how it could really be helping you get from point A to point B, yeah. understanding solutions and things like that. So I have a question just mm. kind of off that, like how do you find, or how do you start to build a connection? Like how do you know when you really connect with a therapist? Is there a certain indicators that we look out for? Cause I think sometimes when people go to therapy, they're more so just nervous about sharing yep. like what yep. they feel and I don't want to be judged. And I don't want to be looked at crazy, mm -hmm. but how do they move past that point to actually know if they connect with this therapist yeah. or not, or if like therapy is actually working. For yeah. Them? Well, therapy is a trial and error, mm -hmm. but in all true therapy sessions, when you first come in, it's no different from starting a friendship with someone. You mm -hmm. want to get to know them. You feel each other's vibe. I'm not going to sit you down and say, okay, tell me what's going on in your life. And then you just share your whole life. Why would you trust me with that information? Mm -hmm. What have I done to make you feel like that I'm trustworthy to hold your most intimate spaces? And so it is so important for us to connect and decide. My job as a therapist, when I first come in with you, I want you to feel like you're comfortable. I want you to let your guard down. But I also want to share a little bit about me mm -hmm. so that you can understand, are we aligned? Mm -hmm. Spirituality matters. Mm -hmm. Are we on that same wavelength? Mm -hmm. um, what type of therapy are you looking for? What are you hoping to get? And that's where a key of solution-based therapy mm -hmm. comes in. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't want to be in therapy for 10 years, let's set that boundary right there. Yes, I've come on. <laughs> I want 10 sessions and this is what my goal is. This is what my problem is. Can you help me get there? And the way that I answer you, the oh, way man, that I divulge I myself to you. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> yeah. you don't, cause you don't hear that. Like most mm -hmm. people, what you just said, the therapist comes and says, okay, tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you don't really get that. Like, well, tell me a little bit about you and your journey from the therapist side. I don't think, even when I was in therapy, it was more so like, you clearly have a problem cause you're here. So let's talk about it. But I love and the measurable, yeah. the measurable aspect oh, of yeah, this the, is what I want the, to the do. Yeah. This is the number of sessions. Like, how do we really hit the ground running to make sure that we are hitting those markers that we're achieving the goal? Like, right. it kind of puts so push you a little bit. Yeah. Come on now. Come on, somebody. <laughs> they are so dependent on their therapist. It's like, and they're not really seeing the growth. Um, that they want to see because they don't have like measurable goals. They I think that's so fan I think talking. that's so fantastic yeah. to yeah. approach therapy in that way. Solution -based. therapy is not meant to be a lifetime of taking over your life and mm. every step of the way you've got to go sit down and talk with somebody to say, is this decision right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It is my job to equipped you with these tools so that when this problem happens, okay. I've gone through this. Yeah. I know what to do. Yeah. These are the steps. I can handle it. Mm -hmm. It is my, jo my job to say, did you do it right that time? How did you feel when mm -hmm. you did it that time? Mm -hmm. Could you go back and change it if you would? And I help you process those things so that you can make those decisions. To be honest, all of us have the tools inside of us to heal ourselves, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to access yep. those tools. Yeah. And as a therapist, it is our job to say, these are your tools, but they might not be the same as your tools. Yep. And these are how your tools best work for you mm -hmm. and how to apply those mm -hmm. tools. And once you learn those things in your life personally for yourself, mm -hmm. then you're able to go into the world and accept these challenges and heal from traumas that you have already experienced. Is that the greatest challenge that you see in a therapeutic space of people like not getting understanding the tools or like understanding how to utilize the tools or how to access them? Is that the? I think the first biggest issue in therapy and why people don't continue is because they haven't found the therapist for them. Mm -hmm. If you don't find someone who knows how to access you, yes. then how can you receive what they're saying? Yes. Yeah. If they're just shooting mumbo jumbo or textbook information, mm -hmm. how can you relate to that? And that's what makes heart and behavior health a little bit different is yes. our therapists have experienced things. Mm -hmm. If you have grown up as a child with a parental addiction, mm -hmm. what does it look like growing up as the child that mm -hmm. is raised in that environment? Yes. What behaviors come from that person that transfer into your adulthood? Mm -hmm. Why are you like that? Yeah. Um, 
if you haven't been married for 20 years and dealt with the ups and downs of marriage and all the many things that come along with it, how can I tell you to stay or leave in a situation or give you the tools to fight? Mm -hmm. A lot of times experience that Mm -hmm. is added with the education of how the brain works and what Mm -hmm. science says helps somebody to relate and also heal at the Mm -hmm. same time. That brings me to my next question of like, I think a lot of people are like, mental health, right, is really popular right now. And wellness is really popular right now. And everybody is kind of wanting to be these healers and these therapists. A lot of people are trying to like tap into that space. So how would a person who wants to be a therapist or wants to be a counselor, but maybe has not experienced some of those things, how can they help a person who maybe has experienced a lot of trauma that they may not have been exposed to. Um, Maybe they do only have the education side of it, but maybe not the experience side. Like, what would you say to somebody who is a therapist, but maybe has just not experienced those similar traumas? How can they still help guide a person that has? Get around people who have experienced life. Mm. The only way to tap into life is to throw yourself in there. If you don't understand what it is like to be uh, a product of a broken home, Mm -hmm. of course my book can tell me what that is like, but Mm -hmm. until you have talked to people who have healed and been through that Mm -hmm. and exposed you to what that is like and be Mm -hmm. open. Mm You know, sometimes when we get educated, we get on this path of this is what I know, this is what science says, and Mm -hmm. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But in mental health, there is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. There is no true, uh, this will work for you and that will work for you. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Mental health is tailored towards the mental person, the person that is going through that mental challenge. Mm -hmm. And if a therapist is able to open themselves to all different environments to educate themselves on what does this feel like for you? Mm -hmm. What did that make you, how did that affect you in your life? To not just look at the books, but look at the people Mm -hmm. that will begin to give them some insight. I can't say it will naturally give them everything, but the more experience they have, the more they put themselves out there, the stronger the therapist they will be. Because education is not everything on it. I could pick up a book and I can learn, okay, these are the different types of um, therapy techniques and this is what you do. That's the easy part. But how do I convey that message that I just learned to this person who's really over here hurting? How can I speak it in a way that she understands it and is able to relate it to her life? So that's the biggest part as a therapist and to get in there with the people. Mm. Get in there. It's messy. It is messy, that, yeah. but and you will make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Own up to your mistakes and say, maybe I didn't get right. get it right telling you this and acknowledge those things. Yeah. But go and fix them. Work on yourself. Just like we go work out, therapy is a muscle that you must exercise mm. constantly. Mm-hmm. I want to paint a picture for the people that are watching where it's, this is what therapy typically looks like and this is what it looks like when it's solution-based. So like, what are the differences that people could probably, if you currently have a therapist, like I'm not getting the solution-based part of therapy. Like how can they distinguish between the yeah. two? Well. Typically, when you go in with a therapist, you're going to, once you guys get comfortable with one another, Mm -hmm. you're going to tell them what your issues are, Mm -hmm. right? You're going to say, this is keeping me back. This is holding me back and all this. And that therapist will then give you certain tools to say, okay, breathe through this. Stop live in the moment. Mm. Things of those, that dialogue, that language. If you've been in therapy, you've heard these mm-hmm. these these words mm-hmm. before. The difference with solution-based is when you come in here and you sit with me and we have decided you have trusted me. Mm-hmm. You've trusted me with your most private and intimate things. And I say, now what do you want? What is the outcome of this goal? Mm. And we're going to break it down. This is where your problem is. Mm. These three things can help you fix them. This is where you are right now. This is where you want to be. And we're going to log and dialogue. And we're going to each step of the way. You can almost put it in a basis of one, two, three. You've hit step one. Now we've, 
we've, we've got this down. Now we can move to two. Now, based on two or how you're living and how you're handling things, you can say for yourself, oh, my God, I have made progress. I did not cuss her out today. I might have felt like it, but I didn't say it. So we have moved to solution number two. Now, once we are in solution number two, this is usually where the hardest work happens is where you're breaking down why the behaviors mm -hmm. are such, what causes and controlling yourself mm -hmm. to move past that moment. Most of us are so intense in moments. Mm -hmm. That intensity of what we feel is so overwhelming that we fail to realize it is a moment. Yes. It will leave and I can make it to the next section if I just hold on at this time. Mm -hmm. And so if you have something to gauge, this is where we are here and now we're moving. And this is where I hope to be at the end. I'm going to tell you going to tell me what your goal is. And I'm going to say, ma'am, we're not there yet and we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold you accountable mm -hmm. for when you're messing up. And sometimes in therapy, not all. The therapist may not hold you accountable because we're scared of pushing them away. We're scared of how they're going to react. With me, I'm going to take, that's not what we set out to do. Mm -hmm. This is counterproductive to what you wanted in the end. Mm -hmm. And so we need to go back. Yeah. We need to go back and start again. Mm -hmm. So we're on this, this path and that's what solutions are. We've got the, the problem. Here's the solution. Here's where I want to be. Now that right there is just so interesting. Like, it's like when I think about your program, yes, and how you deal with people yep. on the fitness level, yep. it is exactly verbatim. Literally, yeah. I have never seen that with therapy where it's like, literally, it's what's goal. your goal? Yeah. Like, why are you coming to therapy? Why are you coming to see me? Cool, you want to lose 10 pounds, you want to process through 10 pounds or whatever your emotional stuff is. This is the plan, and like. That accountability, I have just never, as a person who just literally had their second therapy session yesterday, I'm like, now you know what? It's not quite like that. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, <laughs> we've been talking, but I'm like, okay, but okay, what's the plan? Like, I think there's just such a unique approach to mental, to where I can take that to her because I do feel like we're good. Like we had that meeting up front to see if we fit. Mm -hmm. And as we're going in, like that gives me so much direction, like for me to like, can we set this up to, right. so that we can co-labor in a better way in the process? Right. Like I just really, really appreciate that. And I think that that's what you're saying is so good because it's teaching people how to do therapy mm -hmm. and be accountable for mm -hmm. their experience. Because I think a lot of the feedback that I hear is like, well, therapy didn't work for me. I tried it and it yep. don't work. Yep. And it's like, I think hearing the tools of what you're saying kind of gives the person agency to say, this is actually how you go into a therapy session and kind of what to look for. If you are, do you have a goal? Asking yourself that. And even if the therapist isn't asking that, it kind of gives you a gauge of like, is this the type of therapy that I want? Or do I need to go to someone who actually is more intentional about like helping me to get a result because some people I think they want to go to therapy to just talk about their feelings. Yeah, I have and that's right. okay yep. too. Yep. But you have to decide as the person, what are you looking for? What right. do you want? Do you just want to go to someone and them listen to you non-judgmentally mm -hmm. and listen? That is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But mental health, you have to take control mm -hmm. of what you want. Yep. Educate yourself. Mm -hmm. What kind of therapy are these uh, therapists providing? And look those types up and see, is that what I want? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't match what you want, that's not right for you. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you don't know what you want. Trial, yep. trial yep. and error. It is okay to go to a therapist and say, this was great, but I don't really think you're for me mm -hmm. and go on to the next one. Yep. Take ownership of what you want in your life. This is your mental health. You own it. If your therapist is maybe not going the route that you want to hey, wait a minute, ma'am, this is what I need. Can, mm -hmm. can you do that? Mm -hmm. If not, thank you. Yes. You have that right to choose for yourself. Mm -hmm. You putting a stank on this. I just, I just love it you so much. I, I told so you I was excited. To ask. <laughs> yes. So this is it's so good because we haven't even gotten a chance to like really dive into just your journey because I know that you're a mom, mm -hmm. you know, you're running a business and I'm just curious to know like how do you juggle being essentially the strong person, right? Like being the person that is a therapist for other people but you still have your own life. And I think a lot of our watchers and listeners, they are the strong person. Like they are the the 
the person that people depend on uh, when things are going wrong or right mm -hmm. for that matter. So I'm just curious to, to know, like, what would you say to the person who feels like they always have to be strong and uh, they always have to hmm. be, you know, like wear the cape? Like, what would you say from a, a health professional standpoint to that person? Uh, I'll just say this. That word strong is so loaded for me. In our society, it is seen as such an accolade to be this strong black woman, this strong man, this just strong in general. Mm -hmm. Strong is hard and it is mm -hmm. exhausting yes. and it is very alienating. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we feel as the strong one that we can't let the chips fall because then we don't wear the cape of being the strong one anymore. But we have to manipulate the definition of what that word strong means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am a mother of four. I have been married for 20 years. I am running a business. I am in school right now. I am all over the place. Mm -hmm. And anybody on the outside always say, oh, she's so strong. Mm -hmm. She, But my strength is, is I am showing people my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. It is a mess. Mm -hmm. My life is chaotic. Mm -hmm. Things are not going the way they should go. But guess what? I'm still strong because I'm hurtling through that mess, but that doesn't mean that I don't need other things to help me. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to understand. Strength is being able to say, guys, I need some help. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a bit much. Yep. This is overloading. And mm -hmm. so when people come in and say, I'm tired of being the strong one, I'm tired of wearing this armor, of, I get that. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do that. Yeah. You can let all of these things fall. You can let things go. It doesn't have to look great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wear the badge of being strong. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And we have to be accepting that just because Kenny's strength doesn't look like your strength, mm -hmm. that's okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, being okay in your space where you are right now. And when people say, how do you do it? I I don't know. I'm real. I tell them the truth. I don't know. <laughs> it's day by day. We just yes. we take it as it comes. There yes. is no formula yes. to this, guys. There is no perfect wording that I can give you. There's no book. Mm -hmm. There is just tackling each obstacle as they come. Yes. That's it. Well, that's very relatable. Because we people, I'm sure a lot of people think if I just could do it like this, yeah. that it would all be fine. And it's like, Let's no. just set the proper expectation that that's so just not. not flip flop around and just <laughs> kind of flow. Yes. And stop yes. taking pride in the word of strong. Mm. Stop using that as your alculate. Oh, I'm strong. Mm. What mm. does that even mean? Mm. We both out here surviving. Mm. 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 How do we shift from surviving to thriving? Is that because I think a lot of times people think thriving is like you said, the the misconception of strong. Like I I'm I have all these things, but I'm going through it with almost like this perfected way of going through it, right? And from what I hear you saying, thriving actually looks like just being able to admit that, like, hey, I don't have it all figured out, but I'm working through it, and I need help. Or to put something down. Yes. That part. Girl, take that cape off. Mm. Mm. You do not have to be a superwoman. Mm. Like, just be you. You do not have to be all these things in order to be extraordinary. Stop. Take your cape off. That's what we did. do. Hey. All right, guys. Well, on that note, I'm sorry we had to end this so quickly. <laughs> We're going to have Sharice back, I promise yes. you. But if you have not already gotten your tickets for the healing experience, I don't know what you waiting on. <gasps> Also, if you ain't at the retreats, I don't know what you waiting on because she's going to be here and she's giving one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yes, so yes, listen, I'm trying to tell y'all, definitely pull up. Sharice, thank you so much for coming. It's for the Soul Podcast. Thank you. Love you. Peace. I had no idea that's what you did for me.